she can smell everything again and a little bit more that she still doesn't understand what the fuck she's smelling so there's that too so just letting you guys know that as well so we're about to start on chapter 11 i hope you guys got your snacks your tea whatever the fuck and i hope you're ready for a nice nice story I'm gonna lay off on Ellie because if I was eight years old orphan who watched my grandpa get turned into a toaster turtle in front of me before getting struck in a whole ass apocalypse with a random, I'd be pissed too. Yep. She, that's three people she lost now. Her mother abandoned her when she was one years old. Her father died in the war. And now her grandpa got toasted. Like, we can't get mad at Ellie. Like, she's just like, yo, I can't have nothing I love. She literally said, um, like her grandpa asked her, why are you so horrible? And she said, nothing, uh, like, I never, nothing, I never benefited from being nice anyway. I never benefited from being good anyway. Even when she was at her best behavior and she was good and hoped for things to just, you know, you know, her family not to die on her or leave her, her family dies on her and leave her. So she's like, man, fuck being good. Like, you never got me anywhere. <laughs> okay, hidden. Listen. You're going to find out. I'm going to start reading, okay? I'm going to start reading. The dog's all right, yeah. Five power bars. Five packets of instant jello. Two lime. One orange. One lemon. One cherry. A space blanket. A small brown bottle of ancient iodine tablets. One bottle of water. Her car keys with a working mini flashlight. A spare magazine of 9mm bullets for the Glock. An airline travel pack that contained a silver of soap, a folding toothbrush, a teeny tiny tube of toothpaste that she must have squirreled away from a flight somewhere. An Altoids tin she always carried in her fanny pack. She hit real pay dirt, fishing line and weights, a cable saw, waterproof matches. Oh, yeah, so that's a, that's a good thing about Alex. She still had other stuff on her body that that didn't get lost, but she still lost a lot of stuff in her pack. So this is what Ellie has on her. Um, I mean, not Ellie, Um, Alex, sorry. This is what Alex has on her. Not fuck like that. An excuse. Excuse. Um, an asshole is an asshole no matter the circumstances. Damn, bored. <laughs> Damn. In the Altoids tin she always carried in her fanny pack, she hit real pay dirt. Fishing line and weights, a cable saw, waterproof matches, a couple of band-aids, two small X-Acto blades, X-Acto blades, a couple of safety pins, a tiny baggie of cotton balls, mini tube of Vaseline, and four foil packets of alcohol wipes, a miniature compass. That, along with the Glock and her knife, was the sum total of their gear, everything she had left. Of course, Ellie hadn't brought a thing down the mountain other than her little Hello Kitty pack. How useless is she? She didn't even bother to get nothing from her grandpa's bag. Except for a collapsible fishing rod, a small box of leers, and an ancient black and decker flashlight. Working, thank God. The pack was crammed with kid stuff. Handful of toiletries, wads of clothing, water bottle with three gulp- gulps left, a patched grimy gun bear that was more thread than anything else. Okay, so maybe they weren't completely screwed. The basic four for survival were warmth, shelter, water, and food. Well, Alex could start a fire which she would need because all she had were the clothes on her back. Oh yeah, it's really cold. It's like fall right now, so it's pretty chilly out there. She could build a debris shelter easily enough. Her filter had been in the frame pack, so that sucked, but she still had that one full bottle, and she knew where to find more water. She had the compass in the sun, and she knew roughly where they had to go, how far away they were, and that she had made it on her own without too much trouble. Food was kind of a problem. There was the Glock, but aside from the spare magazines, the rest of her ammunition, an entire brick, was gone. 
along with the rest of her gear. Not that she knew the first thing about hunting with a pistol and was about to waste bullets figuring it out. She might get a, she might set a snare. Deadfalls, was re, deadfalls were relatively easy, but using any kind of trap meant sitting several and staying put, and no way was she interested in that. They could certainly fish. They were heading for the river, and the rangers were only a couple of days away, max. She could make it on half a power bar a day, if she had to. What's the jello for? She glanced over at Ellie, huddling against a fallen, lichen-encrusted tree trunk. The valley floor was dense with a carpet of dead leaves and a log lamb of dead and blasted trees. Their trunks broken into jagged, splintery toothpicks and coated with cool slicks of moss. Alex spied a few withered, knobby platters of fungus on one tree. Chicken of the woods, if she was right, which was a shame because that was an edible mushroom she actually knew, but it was way too late in the year now. Too late, too cold. Everything remotely edible, ferns, choke cherries, cattails, duck potatoes, either dead or too hard to get at. She might find nuts, hickory or beech nuts. Acorns were, be- Acor- acorns were a better bet, but you had to soak them, didn't you? For days, if she remembered right. Probably a reason the Ojibwe thought of them as famine food, something you ate as a last resort. Well, they weren't there yet. Uh, let me see. Nah, I don't know about that one. Not everything could be black and white. Oh, shit, I forgot to immerse. I'm carving spec. <laughs> Hold on, let me get some water. Um, the gel is for quick energy, she said. You mix it with water and then you drink it before it sets. Ellie made a face. Yuck. You won't say that when you're hungry. She drew in a deep breath and let it go with a sigh. Now that the day was going, the air was very cold, but it was still edged with that strange cherry stink. Cherry stink, okay. <laughs> you smell that? Smells like burned rubber or something. No. Ellie nibbled on her lower lip. Her iPod buds were draped around her neck. She looked small and miserable, and only smelled like piss and sweat now. You know, I didn't mean to fall. Which, Alex considered, was about as much as an apology as she was going to get out of Ellie. No one's blaming you, she said. A complete lie, but no point arguing about it. Could happen to anybody. I love how Alex is like, I know this is a lie, but whatever. <laughs> Damn. Ellie gave her a long look and then seemed to consider the subject closed because she said, why are they shooting at us? I don't think they were, she said absently, thinking that maybe she ought to follow the base of the mountain, see if she could find her pack. There was no way she could follow the pack's exact line of descent. But if she could pinpoint as closely as possible just where she'd been on the mountain, there was an outside chance she'd find it. The first couple of shots were from a handgun, and the others were from a rifle. Anyone with a rifle probably has a scope, and if they were shooting at us, we'd have known it. Then what were they shooting at? Beats me. Rifles usually mean hunters. Dogs, too. Do they use dogs for deers? She didn't think so. But deer, season, but deer season hadn't officially begun, and most hunters don't use pistols. Now that she really thought about it, those five shots, there had been more than three, maybe as many as five, had come rapid fire. So probably not a hunter calmly bagging a deer, but someone freaked out enough to squeeze off a lot of rounds. Just what we need, some crazy hunters. Ellie was okay with that pink parka, there was no way she could have mistaken for it. she could there's no way she could be mistaken for a deer. But her sweatshirt was black. She might as well be wearing a target, like the deer in that Gary Larson cartoon. How come you know so much about guns? My dad taught me. How come? He wanted me to be prepared, I guess. Is that why he gave you that gun? Mm. He didn't want to get into it. She began repacking her emergency gear. Look, 
I'm just going to bushwhack along the base of the mountain a little ways. See how bad it is. If the going's not too rough, it might be worth to see if we can find my get- Her voice choked off. Ellie had the black case in her hands. Oh, fuck. The thing survived! Oh, my God. Uh, let me see. Damn, she's basically just Hiyoko. Got the stench and everything. Oh, my God. Good cry. Is this a book? Yep. I'll shut up crying. Whoa, this is really heavy. Her fingers fumbled with the zipper. Maybe there's food. No! Alex snatched the case from the startled girl. It's it's not food. Jeez, spaz much? I'm... Alex snudged, snugged the case into her fanny pack and then zipped the pack. It's private. Whatever, I'm staying here. No, you should come. I don't want to. Well, I... Something spirited out of the corner of her eye, and her head jerked right, scanning the woods. She caught the tiniest stir of leaves, nearly behind them now, and she spun around in time to catch the slink of something dark threading through the underbush, and then the stink, more feral than Mina's fear, and even wilder, hit her. An animal. But what? There was coyotes in the woods, and wolves. She just didn't know. She worried about the order turning it over in her mind, trying to place it. How am I able to do this? A person's not like a wolf or dog, but I think I'm getting things regular people don't smell. Ellie doesn't smell that sweet, burnt stink, and I'll bet she doesn't smell this. As if on cue, Ellie tossed a dispirited look over her shoulder, then back at Alex. What is it? Nothing. No. She didn't know the smell. Couldn't even find the right words. If not for the odor, she'd have believed what she'd seen was a trick of the light. Thought I saw something, that's all. I don't see anything. It's gone. It's probably nothing, but I don't know if you should stay alone. I don't care what you think. Ellie's face was grimy. One knee of her jeans had ripped, and the knee was scraped raw. Her pink parka had torn, the artificial fill boiling out in white gob- gobbets. I'm tired. I don't like you, and I'm not going anywhere right now. Well, that did seem to cover it. Fine. Just holler if you need anything. I don't need you. I won't be but 15 minutes. Ellie screwed in her earbuds. I don't care if you never come back. After 20 minutes of clawing her way through briery hummocks of brush, of brush and jumbled heaps of splintery branches, she was huffing. The forest pressed in with claws and fangs, snatching at her hair, whipping her face, tugging at her ankles. She paused, arming sweat from her forehead, sorting through the problems like a geometry proof. If she had a lot of time, if she did not have to work, oh my, my chest, ooh, I'm crying, Eddie Wingo. (laughs) Uh, Sorting through the problems like a geometry proof. A, if she had a lot of time. B, if she did not have to worry about a kid. C, she might have a decent chance of finding her gear. D. However, judging from the rubble she's found so far, her pack was more than likely torn to shreds, its contents spilled over the mountain like debris from a plane crash. E. So hello, her pack was gone. So basically, she tried to go and find her bag again, but more than likely, her bag got fucked up and broke open, and now all the contents inside of it was lost. So she has to go and just go back, get the kid, and just hope for the best. Me can't find to get in there and clap her cheeks. I'm crying. Wait. He retraced her steps, trying to dredge up from what she remembered from the map. They could maybe squeeze out another four or five miles before dark if they hustled. That would put them at the campground where, where she planned to stay overnight, wouldn't it? The campground was maybe a quarter mile off the main trail and probably had a ready-made fire pit, so that was good. They might look out and find a shelter, too. She spied a puff of smudgy pink through the trees. Ellie had her back to Alex, and she was looking down at something. Then Alex spotted her emergency gear piled to one side. What? She repacked her gear. She remembered that. She left her pack behind because she was going to be right back, so what was Ellie- Hey! She thrashed through the bush. What are you doing? At the sound of Alex's voice, Ellie jumped, threw a startled look over her shoulder, and then must have decided that she did not like what she saw. Because she was already up, 
backing away, her hands up as Alex crashed out of the woods. I was just looking! Alex's eyes dropped, then her heart fell. The case was open. <sighs> Ellie don't know how to mind her damn business. She just opened Alex's parents' ashes, basically, because she, she was so nosy about what's inside the case. So, that happened. <laughs> Chapter 12. I wasn't going to steal anything, Ellie said. Her voice was a little gluey, her breath edged with a nip of cinnamon. I was just trying to help. Help? Alex's voice came out hoarse and ragged with rage. You ate a whole power bar. I was hungry, Alex tried a defiant glare, which somehow made her look even more pathetic. A pearl of a tear glistened on one cheek. She wanted to strangle the kid. It wasn't just about the power bar. You ate a day's worth of food. It was one bar. And you wanted to know what was in the case. That's the real reason you went my things. Well, so what? Alex shouted. She stamped her feet. Her eyes blazed. It was no big deal. It's just a Bible and a couple baggies. Why are you carrying around crap like that anyway? It's not crap. Aunt Hannah's Bible lay on the ground. The Bible wasn't strictly part of the game plan, but was sturdy enough to cushion the two heavy gouge plastic bags. Ellie had teased out the letter as well. Alexandra Bethany was scrolled in funky purple ink across the envelope, and the paper felt had and the paper smelled very faintly of lavender and spice. Alex had slid the letter into the Bible at random, not really with any particular passage in mind. She'd never been sold in the Bible as Ouija board. But somehow, the letter had found its way to Job. Where, wherefore, I abhor myself in repentant dust and ashes. Oh, that's ironic. <laughs> Is that you? Ellie asks. Alex didn't reply, turning the envelope over in her hand. She saw that the, black, the, black, the back flap was intact. She slid the letter back to its place in Job and squared the Bible into the bottom of the case. Then she gingerly cupped the larger of the plastic bags in both hands. The bag was heavy, maybe eight pounds. It might easily split, but her careful eyes spotted no rips or tears. The, th the contents were lumpy and gray and sifted in her hands like sand. She allowed herself to think that it was only just dust. Why, asked Ellie, are you carrying around dirt? Ah. <sighs> Oh, Ellie, my head. I know she's a kid, so she doesn't know what the fuck it is. But damn, Ellie. Like, she's eight, bro. Oh, fuck. Dead. Beat the shit out of her. Oh, no. Kids be dumb as shit and curious. That's not an excuse. Yes, it is. What are y'all on? If it was me, she'd be dead already. Damn. Respect. Though, for giving her the benefit of the doubt, this kid needs to shut the fuck up, yo. Yeah. I mean, if I was eight, I wouldn't know what the fuck she was carrying. I'd be like, why is she carrying around a bunch of dirt? But I wouldn't question. I'd be like, uh, maybe it's for camping reasons and shit. This kid needs to shut the fuck up, I'm crying. Yeah, so we're already to chapter 13, damn. We might have to read more chapters. <laughs> I'm not even sure if I want to draw this, because this is just disrespectful that she did. I can already imagine the scene, but fuck that. That's disrespectful. Ah, oh, my face. Ah, all right. So we're now in chapter 13. Are we going to stop soon? When Alex didn't reply, Ellie tried again. It's getting dark. Aren't we going to stop? Yes, Alex said. She did not turn around. They had been walking steadily for what Alex judged had been about two hours and in virtual silence. The sun was just skimming the trees immediately behind. The light was fading as the afternoon began slipping into the night. Hold on. My nose. All right. Um. Uh. Let me 
let me see, let me see. Mm, all right, so the sun was just skimming the trees immediately behind, and the light was fading as the afternoon began slipping into night. It had gotten even colder, the canopy of high, dense pines trapping the chill. A thick carpet of pine needles muffled their steps as effectively as heavy snow. Ahead, she picked out a dilapidated trail marker, tracked to an oak. Tra- oh, no, tacked to an oak. <laughs> Fuck. The sign listing to the left on the single rusted nail ahead. Moss knobs. Oh, you know what? I'm going to have to draw this in order for y'all to understand what the fuck I'm talking about in this. So, let's see. Oh, yeah. Did I open up the thing back up again? Yeah, I did. All right, cool. So, we're going to do a new tab. And we're just going to imagine that it's like this. Basically, it's like that. It's gonna be very messy, but it's whatever. Crying. Like, just like this child needs to shut the fuck up. I can't. Oh shit, how do I direct this one, bitch? What? I think this will just be like this. Oh, and I think they said it's stacked to a tree. So, actually, now I think about it, if it's stacked on a tree like that. Hmm. So, here goes the tree right here. Ollie better redeem herself later. Yep. I know, I know. I warned y'all guys, you were not going to like this child in the beginning. She is very frustrating to deal with. I'm not trying to. No, that looks too bullshitty. Not even that. I feel like there's not really any real paths going on. So, the paths are probably like crumbly, and there you go. Oh, shit. My bad. Wrong tree. Yeah, I know. Most people don't like Ellie in the beginning. 
for very good reasons. Disrespectful, rude. We trying to save your stupid ass life. You keep fucking shit up, like. At the same time, Alex is honestly a pretty good person for dealing with her bullshit the whole time. Because, you know, other people would have been like, man, fuck this kid and just let her die. <laughs> Especially in Apocalypse. Yeah, nah. Fuck that kid. <laughs> bullshit tree right here all right so basically what it says is butternut hello donzilla god i'm not like a professional writer so i'm just gonna just write it and y'all should be good This man coming in and talking about butternut. I'm crying. Hey, Francis. What's good? Thank you for the 10 bitty bit. <sighs> We're doing another read and draw. So I'm just drawing out this part so that they can have a visual of what's going on here. So they have to decide three ways to go. And if I remember correctly, they're trying to find camp. So that they can rest for the night. I don't know what to do for either uppercase or lowercase. You don't got time for that when you're trying to survive, yo. What happened, Spec? Yeah, we've been in this for about an hour, Francis. So you missed uh, basically the first two chapters. You were here last time, right? Because if so, I could sum you up real quick. Oh, I just forgot. <laughs> I forgot to put the campfire music. Okay, so basically what happened in the first two chapters so far is the fact that, um, you know, Alex checked what she had left on her body, which was surprising a lot. Um, she had a fanny pack and some other stuff on her body that survived from not being, fallen, not had, having fallen with the rest of her backpack. And then basically what happens is, I'm crying, Francis. Academia now, but couldn't spell it, so I said, but I'm crying, Donzilla. So basically, um, 
you know, once she figures out what they have and what's their, what's their resources, you know, they have very little and they have to probably have to eat like one bar a day, like half a bar or one bar a day in order to survive. And she decides that she's going to see if she can possibly pinpoint where her bag went and go get it really quick. So she tells Ellie, you know, like, come on. Ellie said, I'm not going anywhere with you. And she's like, okay, then stay here. I'll be back. But before she left, um, Ellie wanted to know, Ellie had her hands on her parents' remains in, um, earlier because it was in a black case and she was really curious. She took it away from her and she was like, don't worry about it. So um, Alex left to go look for her bag. No luck on there. When she came back, she found that Ellie had not only went inside her belongings to eat a ba- um, to eat a snack bar, but she even opened up her parents's um, where her, her her parents's case where their ashes are inside. And inside it held a letter, probably from her parents, a Bible from her her aunt. And her, the two bags, the two plastic bags carrying her parents' ashes. And the good little girl made up excuses being all like, like Alice said, what the fuck are you doing? And the little girl made up excuses being all like, well, I was trying to help and she like, help how you old shit? And, you know, after they argue a little bit, the little girl was just like, with finality, with the argument being all like, why are you carrying around a bunch of dirt? And, you know, Alex didn't reply. And they've been walking for two hours now. And they've now come to a crossword where they can go down three paths. They're trying to make it to camp so that they can have a proper campfire that they don't have to make. And be able to rest with possible sh- possible shelter, too. So right now I'm drawing the, the crosswords right now. Too cozy right now to hear this beat. I'm about to KO. You want me to turn off the beat? They got a scrab? Exactly. You'd like me to turn off the music? If you don't indulge in some caffeine, crying. I mean, relatable. I did just wake up like an hour ago. I don't drink coffee, only tea. I'm fucked with red board. Is it zombies? Well, Yeti Mingo, I have repeated the story summary of the apocalypse about nine times, so I'll just have you figure that out when we continue reading. Anyway, it's better when you don't know what's going on, when you immerse into the story and see what's going on and See what the character's thinking and trying to figure out. It's a lot more interesting that way. Mm, it doesn't have to be coffee, honestly. Hit up some soda or some cold water. It's nearly 10 p.m. over here, so I don't even mind crying. Not that cold water has caffeine, but you get what I mean. Yeah. I'm gonna do it like that, fuck it. Crying. Boris, let me hit up my fridge real quick.
10 p.m. Damn, it's 3 p.m. Where I'm at. It's been dark all day, so I've been sleepy all day. Mm. I just realized I should probably open up the navigator like that and let's see. Yeah, there we go. Although I don't think the navigator is needed for this, right? Yeah, no, no. You guys will be fine. texture on trees man i need to learn how to texture tree, trees better but there's a lot of textures on some trees man Four forty-eight. 48 damn oh 4 p.m right yeah board that means you're in the east coast right Hi, Nico. You made it for the second read and draw. very simplified but <laughs> that should give you guys at least an imagery of what's going on All right, so that is the next scene. So this is what she's looking at right now. This is the crossroad that they're at. I'm gonna reread that last sentence just so you guys know. We're already at up to the three chapters, so we're at chapter 13. Um, I'm assuming you listened to the first stream, right, Nico? How are you? All right, just a little sleepy. But I'm good. <laughs> Are you caught up, Nico? Or did you listen to the first 10 chapters? If so, this won't make sense to you.
All right. Well, reply whenever. I'm going to turn off the music and I'm going to continue on. Basically, what's happened so far in the first new three chapters we're reading, once again, shit happened. I kind of don't want to repeat anymore. So, we're going right back into it. <laughs> Ahead, she picked out a dilapidated trail marker, tracked to an oak. The, line, the sign listing to the left on a single rusted nail head. Oh, you know what? It probably would have been more different, though. Mm. Oh, well, whatever. Moss Knob, 9.7 miles to the left. Fire Mountain, 13.7 miles to the right. Luna Lake, 32 miles up ahead. Where you can just type a command and the summary gets put in chat. You right, you right. I'm gonna have to do that. Cause explaining every time is just, mm, it takes off the time. I'm gonna have to do that next time. Alex's stomach cramped over 30 miles to the lake? That was farther than she'd estimated. If only she had her gear, and especially her maps, she might be able to sh figure out a shorter route. Yeah, but you don't. So stop driving yourself crazy. Just calm down, you can deal with this. Another arrow, canted at a 45 degrees angle and pointing northwest, hopefully noted that in a little less than a quarter mile, they could put up at the, Sprice, the Spruce Valley campsite. Okay, that was good. Another 15 minutes or so, and we'll hit the campsite, Alex said. We'll stay there overnight. Outside? There might be shelter. But there's no water. There's, like, nothing. There'll be water. The map said there was a stream. A stream? But how will I go to the bathroom? We haven't even got a tent. I don't want to stay in the woods. It's spooky in the woods. Had she ever been such a major pain in the ass when she was a kid? Look, Ellie, this is the way it is. We sleep in the woods. We drink what we can purify. We share the food. She paused a little. Yeah, she was rubbing it in. And then went on. If we're very lucky, we'll get to the rangers in a couple of days. Now, this isn't exactly my idea of, of fun either, but it's what we've got. Wine all you want, but it won't change anything, all right? No, it's not all right. Again with the foot stomping. Only this time it was more like a thud because of the pine needles. If the kid had felt bad about, oh, stealing food, that had sure worn off fast. I don't want to stay here. I don't want to sleep in the woods. I don't even have my sleeping bag. I'll show you how to make- I want a bath. I want a shower. I want to wash my hair. Ellie. She had to clench her fist to keep from screaming. You're in the middle of the woods. You wouldn't have had a shower anyway. If I had my gear, we could have washed. But I smell him. Ellie grabbed her hair in both hands. I've got Grandpa all over me. I've got his bl blood under my nails and in my hair. She began to sob. Alex's anger evaporated. At that moment, she saw Ellie for what she was. Blood splattered, rumpled, exhausted, and very, very young. Of course, Ellie was scared. In less than 12 hours, she lost her grandfather, left behind her dead father's dog, nearly fallen off a mountain, and now was stuck with some stranger who was just about as scared as she was, who'd gone ballistic over, yeah, a bunch of dirt and a letter from a dead woman. Hey, I'm really sorry. I wasn't thinking. Alex reached for the girl's shoulder, meaning to give a reassuring squeeze. We'll figure out some way to- No! Ellie ducked away. Don't touch me! I hate you! Just leave me alone! Ellie, Alex called. But the girl had turned and was thudding down the trail. Sighing, Alex trudged after Ellie was headed in the right direction and wouldn't go far. Just like a little kid who runs away and ends up sitting on the basement steps. 
Despite everything, her mouth moved in a grin. Hadn't she once? She pulled up suddenly, her nose wrinkling. Weird. That strange, charred smell was back, and, strong, and stronger now, and strangely sweet. Perhaps it had been stronger for some time, but she had but she had been too preoccupied to notice, or had simply gotten used to the stink. Only now she sensed, smelled, something else. She dragged in a deep, full breath, and then flinched at the slab of some horrible, almost alien odor. Oh my god, what is that? The stink was gut-churning, dead, stagnant, and gassy, like days-old roadkill stewing beneath an insanely hot sun. The reek was so strong, it pillowed and balled in her mouth. She spat, but the taste clung, burying her tongue. Just ahead, she spotted Ellie's pink parka crouching behind a th very thick snarl of underbrush. She very nearly called out, but, once, but one look at Ellie into the words jammed behind her teeth at the same moment she realized something else. She could smell Ellie again, and over a distance of, what, 20 yards? 30? The smell was strong, too. Not enough to overpower the roadkill stink, but it was the same complex aroma she smelled once before, on the mountain. A reek of curdled milk and sour breath. Fear. Ellie was scared. No, Ellie was terrified. The air was a welter of odors. Ellie's fears, that cherry sweet stench, her own peculiar perfume of sweat and anxiety, and that dead meat stink that billowed through the woods like ashy gray smoke. Ellie did not look around. She clapped her hands over her mouth. Her eyes bulged as she, as she stared at something beyond a dense veil of branches. What was Ellie looking at? Something that told Alex she really didn't want to know. The lizard part of her brain was screaming for her to run, run, run. But she couldn't leave Ellie behind. Not like this. That wouldn't be right. Slowly, carefully, Alex dropped her knees, the cold earth biting through her hiking pants. Ellie didn't move a muscle. Wordlessly, Alex followed the girl's horrified gaze and then her blood turned to slush. No, she thought. No, please, God, I'm not seeing this. Oof, chapter 14. So what do you think they see in? Uh, let me see. Feed her to the wolves? I'm crying. Have you considered storyboarding for directors? No, but I've done storyboarding before. Also, what's up? How are you? No excuses, damn. She's grieving and getting, going through hell shit and y'all trying to murk her. I'm crying. You too nice back. Nah, y'all just ruthless crying. We just survivors. I'm weak. I already knew people would be very conflicted about this whole thing with Ellie. Because there's a lot of different perspectives people would go on with this. And honestly... Ellie's lucky that she ran into Alex. Anybody else in that mountain probably would have left her ass. Alex is very forgiving and very nice. Pack of wolves ready for dinner? Is that your theory? What else? What y'all think is behind those bushes that they're looking at? Give me your theories. What y'all think about to happen? Just taking a quick breather, so just let me know y'all theories. Cause Ellie's about to sh piss her pants again. Crazy crackhead? Mm, maybe. <laughs> My ass really fell asleep. Oh shit, Francis. Oh, big slime. I'm crying, Jose. Maybe. It's understandable that this ain't the time, bro. She ate with no guidance, no love, just an ugly ass dog in a random girl on the mountains who doesn't even care to live. You right, Spank. Dog gone crazy. 
Mm, you think the dog caught up with them? Mm, okay. Go crazy, go stupid. Oh, Lord, nay. All right, well, we're about to find out in a minute. <sighs> Chapter 14. The tent had burned and melted at the same time. It was left clung in cold, hard, black ash clots to scorched aluminum poles, like petrified meat on the fossilized ribs of a prehistoric dinosaur. An overturned co cook pot vomited a coagulated brown spew that slopped over the stones, ringing the fire pit, and seeped into the dirt. A murder of crows hopped around a scatter of their fallen kind. And as Alex watched, one leaned over, stabbed with a very black beak at a dead woodpecker, and came up with something blue and stringy that it tossed back into its maw with a snap. Next to the cold fire pit were two people, a girl and a boy. The girl was blonde and wore a powder blue sweatshirt with the words Somerville High and a tennis racket stenciled in white. Oh my God, she knew this girl. Where? Yeah, when she stopped to the gas up and called Aunt Hannah. The girl was ponytail blonde. Remember these bitches? Hmm. She didn't recognize the boy. She didn't recognize the boy, although he'd probably been on the same bus. He was reedy, mostly legs with a platform for a head. His sweatshirt, also light blue with the same lettering featured a basketball. In another life, they might have been a couple having a picnic, except these kids weren't munching sandwiches. There was also a woman, a grandmotherly sort, who lay flat on the ground, head thrown back, mouth unhinged, a pair of eyeglasses on a keeper chain dragged in the dirt. Judging from the dried rills of blood on her right cheek, that eye was gone. So was her throat. The skin was ripped, the knobby tube of her windpipe slopping out, slopping out like a fleshy tapeworm. The blood, and, that, and there had been a lot of it, had dried to rust in a wide bib over the woman's chest. From the way her hands were clawed, Alex thought she'd been clutching her belly when she died. Hadn't done the woman any good either, judging from the way her guts boiled out in a dusky, des desiccated tangle like limp spaghetti. The boy and girl were eating, stuffing their faces, actually. Splashes of blood smeared their mouths and dripped over their chins like runny clown's makeup. With a grunt, the boy plunged his fist into the woman's abdomen and rooted around before coming back up with a drippy fistful of something liverish and soft enough that Alex could hear the squelch as the meaty thing oozed between his fists. <laughs> These niggas munching people! <laughs> oh, fuck! Oh my god. Alex felt the low moan begin in her chest and clapped a hand in her mouth to stop, stop her it back up. Her vision bloomed with black roses, and she felt her hand going she felt her head going a little swimmy. Squealing, ponytail blonde made a grab for her companion's tasty treat. The basketball boy let out a warning grunt and batted her hands away. Pouting, yes. Alex thought crazily, she's pissed. Ponytail blonde, <laughs> pouting, yes. Alex thought crazily, she's pissed. Ponytail blonde tossed her head hard enough to make her filthy hair dance. Then turning away from the boy, the girl jabbed with two stiff fingers and gouged out the woman's left eye. She gave the slick, bloody globe a triumphant wave as if taunting her basketball playing boyfriend. But he paid no attention and kept chowing down on whatever it was he pulled out. With another toss of her head, Ponytail blonde popped the eye in her mouth like a grape, and at that, Ellie let out a very tiny, but very distinct squeak. Alex's heart tried to blast right out of her chest. Ellie, no, shut up, shut! The boy and girl went still. No, no, no. Alex watched in a kind of sick, free fall of terror as ponytail blonde stiffened, and then lifted her nose and sniffed, testing the air checking for intruders, trying to catch a scent. Alex understood that at once. After all, she smelled them. The dead woman, the bird tent, Ellie's fear. She and Ellie needed to get out of here, maybe make a run for, the, for make, maybe make a run for it. There was enough light to see the trail. 
If she just flat out dug in and ran, she might outdistance them. A Alex had endurance. She was still shaky from this morning, but thank God she was months out from chemo and strong enough. Oh, excuse me. Except these kids were once athletes, and they were acting like, well, animals. Real animals. So they were probably pretty fast. And even if Alex could get away, she didn't think Ellie could. She realized then that her hand had strayed to her Glock and thumbed away the, restraining, the retaining strap without her being aware at all. Could she do that? She only shot at targets, never anything alive. And her conscious mind blank, balked. No, they're kids. They're my age. There's no way I can just shoot them. In the end, she never had to find out. A crow saved them. Embalmed by the lack of reaction to his presence, the crow, very large and very stupid, decided to try its luck. It hopped up to the basketball boy, hesitated, then snatched at a stray lump of the liverish meat that had tumbled to the dirt. Quick as a snake, the boy seized the crow by the neck. The crow let out a huge squawk of a surprise. At the sound, the rest of the crows, the entire murder, lifted into the air in a squalling black mask. Distracted, Ponytail Bond whirled round as the boy wrestled with the struggling crow. The crow was very strong, and it twisted, slashing at the boy's face with its claws. Gargling in pain, Basketball Boy let go. The crow tumbled from its fist in a cloud of torn feathers. One wing was crooked, but the crow was moving fast, hopping away and pulling to the air with its one good leg, I mean good wing. It almost got away. Spinning on her heel, Ponytail Blonde lunged as if sprinting for a cross-court valet. She was, Alex saw now, wicked fast. The bird began to scream in huge, racious squawks. Ponytail Blonde bawled with excitement. That bitch caught that bird fucking fast, bro. They said, she said, where are you going, fam? Go, Alex said to Ellie in a low, urgent whisper. Don't look back. Just go, go, go for the trail and keep running. Without a word, Ellie scurried away, crashing through the underbrush so loudly that Alex cringed. Hand still on her glock, she shot an anxious look over her shoulder. But either the crow's shrieks drowned out the sound of Ellie's flight, or Ponytail Blonde was having too much fun. The girl clamped her hands around the animal's neck and gave a savage twist. The crow's neck snapped with a crisp, crackling sound like a Thanksgiving wishbone. And then Ponytail Blonde corkscrewed the crow's head from its body with a gleeful squall. Alex didn't want to see any more. She turned and fled. Oh, <laughs> that's their first look on the new ravenous children. What had happened to some of the people in this world? So let me read up chat. She hasn't got a chance at life yet. She could be cool. She just needs someone who accepts her for once. Yep. These niggas munching people. They'll accept her as dinner. Oh, shit. No, Sarah Dan. They said bon appetit. <laughs> she popped the eye in her mouth like a green. That's one thing that I already ate, right? What's up? Hey, what's up, Oko? My dumb ass actually thought Moss Knob was Mario Kart. Nigga, what? Sonic Fest. I'm crying. What up, Carrot? It rhymed. I don't know. Oh, oh, it's good. I'm crying. Yep. So uh, we just saw the, the what they what well, some kid people would call them zombies, but they're still alive. That's the thing, and they're not infected by any virus. So it's just like you know, fuck, dude. What are these? I usually just call them the cannibal kids or the, the cannibals. But that's all I could really describe it as. So there's a lot going on in that scene, and I don't even know what to draw from all that. <laughs> Like, what the fuck do you draw for that? And because this is a horrible scene, I can't use the campfire music. I'm gonna have to make this horror based. So let me get my scary playlist. God, my ear is still is itching.
Well, I'm looking for scary, but I, if I remember correctly, my place is called Spoopy. Let me see, where is this shit? Let me move this. So yeah, what do you guys think of what happened? Uh, where is it? Oh, there it is. <laughs> All right, there we go. Again to the real heat now, exactly. And this is just chapter 14 or some shit. They're about to be infected by these hands. <laughs> I'm crying. No, they're not infected though. They don't you can't spread it. It's not spreadable. Cause like I said, it's not it's not a disease. They're not dead and it's not a disease. This is the their magical delicious art. Oh no. Magically delicious. About to have some nightmare, nightmare sleep into this music, crying. Not even October yet. Why are we reading spooky books? I just got here. I don't know what's happening. Oh no, Oka. Oka, were you here for the first ten chapters of the book last time? September in full effect. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this Quincy story. Oh wait.
All right, I'm back. Basically, it's October, but I'm about to go down these last three days, <laughs> September. Y'all hear the music, the background, crying. Shit, he acts as far as I'm concerned, so I'm already over where the ghoul's at. Crying. It's that creep creep. <laughs> On some old Gucci Mane type shit. October, worst month. Halloween, worst holiday. Damn. Best month. Mm, Scorpio, worst season. Oh, shit. October got the best weather. Halloween, that heat. Christmas is first. What? What are y'all talking about? Put this music on and it just disappeared. <laughs> she ghosted! Okay. But this jump scare us? I'm weak. That would have been heat, not gonna lie. I'm weak. I would have been super immersed. Too late now. Now too gonna jump scare us. Watch for real. What's so good about Christmas other than getting cool shit? You don't even get shit anymore after a certain point. For most, the stress wise day where a lot of things get blown to proportion, money going down the drain for obligatory gifts. I mean, honestly, at this point, I, I'm just half assed with Christmas. Um, for the most part, I grew up with not a lot of gifts anyway. So I'm just gonna be like, oh, forgot. Mmm, had to work. Mmm, busy. Just shit like that. At the end of the day, you only do it if you're nice. Specs not wrong about that. Uh, the only thing about Fourth of July is just seeing some fireworks. Yeah. Honestly, my Christmas would be would have been fulfilled every year if I just got new paintbrushes or some shit. That's about it. And you can get them for like five bucks or some shit. Five or twelve bucks at the art store. But my family never took my interest in art seriously. So they would just keep giving me dolls and I'd be sitting there looking at them like, oh, bitch, I don't want this. <laughs> but thank you, but still, I don't want this. <laughs> Gucci may hop on this beat, I swear it'll be fire on some dancing with the devils. Nigga, what? and stuff, but if your parents is about seeing the happiness on your kid's face. We too black to like snow. I'm crying. I've never seen snow yet in my life. I've lived in Florida for all my life. I've only left Florida like two, three times. One when I was really young and the other time I went to Dominican Republic. I don't remember if I went twice or not. My memory's kind of shit. I guess, but my family is pretty fragmented and corrupt. Relatable. October is especially just going to get candy at Stranger's House, and if you don't get enough, hit the gas station and buy more. Mm -hmm. At least with October, though, that one's about friends, and I value that more than anything else. Never seen snow? Yeah. I'm crying bored. Chill. <laughs> No, damn. Okay, so while this is playing, new scene. So the thing is, I'm not sure how to sketch this out. 
I don't know if I want to exaggerate and amplify the horror of this dead woman, like right here. There goes her glasses right here. Some sort of dangling, chain dangling right there. And then, let's see what we do. Some more would be her chin. And she's an elderly woman. Let's see. Snacking real quick, so let me just finish this. Mmm. <laughs> I just crunched on something really hard. Then again, I did put my tuna stuff in the fridge for play. Oh, two nights now, so. That felt gross. Crying spec. Why are you guys eating snow? Yeah, living in Florida, there is no snow. It only snowed here like twice in over a hundred years. One of them being recently. So last year it snowed. Oh no, bored. I shouldn't have read that. I mean, Right, Donzilla. Oh my god. Mm -mm. I'm not reading chat no more. I should have warmed up the tuna a bit. Mm.
Ugh. Now I just feel disgusted. I, I no. I'm just gonna throw away the rest. <laughs> Alright, I'm back with something else, please. <laughs> no. I couldn't eat the tuna. <laughs> Not after what I read. <laughs> it was starting to taste like what I read from what y'all were saying. So, this will be a quick one.
What happened? They were talking about gross stuff. Aw, Francis. I see you. I'm gonna meet myself a little Okay, I'm back. Uh, all right. <laughs> I'm crying. Basically what happened is that they got their first looks on the others that had survived what has changed after the apocalypse. So they've gotten their first look at some of the kids that have turned. <laughs> Cry. 
Ryan's back. <laughs> Honestly, I was gonna have her pupils fill in, but because that bitch, them, them, them little niggas, they both her eyes, them shits are gone. that chapter if you want me to how many people miss me reading that last chapter i'm crying We're gonna do this 360 so we can figure out her face. So, you guys want me to reread the chapter then? Sounds like a lot of y'all are curious. Okay. Mason, shut the fuck up. <laughs>
bullying over it. I'm crying. I'm kind of imagining it like a rock egg. Reread for the people in the back. I'm crying. <coughs> Alright, I'm weak. I can already imagine how Hey Hum said that. My nigga J Moore. Like, what? Alright. Let me reread this. So after she argued with Ellie, Ellie stopped and hid behind the bushes looking terrified. And Alex being curious and very confused what happened, she looks, she comes quietly towards her, you know, um, looks at what she's looking as well. <sighs> Ryan, did my character die last night? Um, no, no one died surprisingly. Y'all really be finding weird topics to chat about. How did we get from eating yellow snow to eating eyeballs? It's, it's in the book, Hidden. Hidden, are you listening? <laughs> right. Hidden, Hidden is chilling in the background, like, wants to know what's happening, but then doesn't understand what's happening. Like, fam, it was in the book. It, it's in the book. I'm gonna reread it, Hidden. I'm gonna reread it. I'm gonna reread it, fam. Yeah, the palace is weird, apparently. So basically, let me let me read this chapter, chapter 14. <clears throat> the tent had burned and melted at the same time. It was left clung in cold, hard, black ash clots to scorched aluminum poles like petrified meat on the fossilized ribs of prehistoric dinosaurs. An overturned cook pot bombed a coagulated brown spew that had slopped over the stones ringing the fire pit and seeped into the dirt. A murder of crows hopped around a scatter of their fallen kind, and as Alex watched, one leaned over and stabbed with a very black beak at a dead woodpecker and came up with something blue and stringy that it tossed back into its maw with a snap. Next to the cold fire pit were two people, a girl and a boy. The girl was blonde and wore a powder blue sweatshirt with the words Somerville High in a tennis racket stenciled in white. Oh my god. She knew this girl. Where? Yeah. When well, she stopped to gas up and called Aunt Hannah. The girl was ponytail blonde. She didn't recognize the boy though. He'd probably been on the same bus. He was reedy, mostly legs with a platform for a head. His sweatshirt, also light blue with the same lettering, featured a basketball. In another life, they might have been a couple having a picnic, except these kids weren't munching sandwiches. There was also a woman, a grandmotherly sort, who lay flat on the ground, head thrown back, mouth unhinged, a pair of eyeglasses on a keeper chain dragged in the dirt. Judging from the dried rills of blood on her right cheek, that eye was gone. So was her throat. Oh shit, I forgot about her throat. Her throat, oof, bro. The skin was ripped, the knobby tube of her wimped pipe sloping out like a fleshy tube worm. Because of her little throat coming out. Yeah. Fuck pink Thanos, nigga what? Enter at a wrong time, I'm crying, Stradre. They outside, I'm weak. <laughs> uh. In another life, they might have been a couple having a picnic. You see, oh, I already read that. Um, the blood, and there had been a lot of it, had dried to rust in a wide bib over the woman's chest from the way her hands were clawed. Alex thought she'd been clutching her belly when she died. Hadn't done the woman any good either, judging from the way her guts boiled out in a dusky, desiccated tangle like limp spaghetti. The boy and girl were eating, 
stuffing their faces, actually. Splashes of blood smeared their mouths and dripped over their chins like runny clown's makeup. With a grunt, the boy plunged his fist into the woman's abdomen and rooted around before coming back up with a drippy fistful of something liverish and soft enough that Alex could hear the squelch as the meaty thing oozed between his fists. Oh. My. God. Alex felt the low moan begin in her chest and clapped a hand in her mouth to stop her it back up. Her vision bloomed with black roses, and she felt her head going a little swimming. Squealing, Ponytail Blonde made a grab for her companion's tasty treat. The basketball boy let out a warning grunt and batted her hands away. Pouting, yes, Alex thought crazily. She's pissed. Ponytail Blonde tossed her head hard enough to make her filthy hair dance. Then turning away from the boy, the girl jabbed with two stiff fingers and gouged out the woman's left eye. She gave the slick, bloody globe a triumphant wave, as if taunting her basketball-playing boyfriend. But he paid no mind, and kept chowing down on whatever it was he pulled out. With another toss of her head, Ponytail Blonde popped the eye into her mouth like a grape. At that, Ellie let out a very tiny, but very distinct squeak. Ellie's heart tried to blast right out of her chest. Ellie, no, shut up, shut up. The boy and the girl went still. No, no, no. Alex watched in a kind of sick freefall of terror as Ponytail Blonde stiffened and then lifted her nose and sniffed, testing the air, checking for intruders, trying to catch a stent. Alex understood that at once. After all, she smelled them. The dead woman, the burned tent, Ellie's fear. She and Ellie needed to get out of here, maybe make a run for it. There was enough light to see the trail. If she had just flat out dug in and ran, she might outdistance them. Alex had endurance. She was still shaky from, his, from this morning, but thank God she was months out from chemo and strong enough. Except these kids were once athletes and they were acting like, well, animals, real animals. So they were probably pretty fast. <laughs> And even if Alex could get away, she didn't think Ellie could. He realized then that her hand had strayed to her cloth and thumbed away the restraining strap without her being aware at all. Could she do that? She only shot at targets near anything alive, and her conscious mind balked. No, they're kids. They're my age. There's no way I could just shoot them. In the end, she never had to find out. Damn, this music. That might be what you get. What? Golly, this music! Did I turn this off? <laughs> a crow saved them. Emboldened by the lack of reaction to its presence, the crow, very large and very stupid, decided to try its luck. It hopped up to the basketball boy, hesitated, and then snatched at a straight lump of the liverish meat that had tumbled in the dirt. Quick as a snake, the boy seized the crow by the neck. The crow let out a huge squawk of surprise. At the sound, the rest of the crows, the entire murder, lifted into the air in a squalling black mass. Distracted, Ponytail Blonde whirled around as the boy wrestled with the struggling crow. The crow was very strong, and it twisted, slashing at the boy's face with its claws. Gargling in pain, basketball boy let go. The crow tumbled from its fist in a cloud of torn feathers. One wing was crooked, but the crow was moving fast, hopping away and pulling at the air with its one good wing. It almost got away. Spinning on her heel, Ponytail Blonde lunged as if sprinting for a cross-court volley. She was, Alex saw now, wicked fast. The bird began to scream in huge, rocacious squawks. Ponytail Blonde bawled with, with excitement. Go, Alex said to Ellie in a low, urgent whisper. Don't look back. Just go, 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 for the trail and keep running. Without a word, Ellie scurried away, crashing through the underbrush so loudly that Alex cringed. Hands still on her glock, she shot an anxious look over her shoulder, but either the crow's shrieks drowned out the sound of Ellie's flight, or Ponytail Blonde was having way too much fun. The girl clamped her hands around the animal's neck and gave a savage twist. The crow's neck snapped with a crisp, crackling sound like a Thanksgiving wishbone. 
And then Ponytail Blonde corkscrewed the crow's head from its body with a gleeful squall. Alex didn't wait to see any more. She turned and fled. That was that chapter. And that's what I'm drawing right now. <clears throat> Felt like that skeleton chair at me and crying. Hold up, why am I moving so fast? Crying. That was overkill. What do you mean what was overkill? Low-key scared? Oh no, board! No, oh, they ain't no two tracks. <laughs> uh, they're athletic, so they were pretty fast. Is this music really not freaking nobody out? Crying. He needs to relax. <laughs> Must be what you get. Uh, someone else quit lives, but as it turns out, it might be what you get. Let's see. Trying to be female chills. Who the fuck is female chills? Not safe for work eating. Nigga limp spaghetti. Get it cause the I'm crying got you. Guess you can say she choked in the game of life. Get out. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> the music made it better. You need to turn that music off. <laughs> I'm crying. Y'all scared? Why y'all scared for? The crow needed a shoe tossed at it. Bitch just was like snap. The crow was trying to go back and forth the team player. Holy crazy. You don't know what you're doing. <laughs> We're in a scary moment, man. What are you talking about? And I gotta finish drawing this old lady getting eaten. Mm -hmm. I ain't scared. Oh, Francis. I just remembered it's nighttime for you. I'm so sorry. So there goes her little bead things. Y'all thought this was a joke? Yeah! This is what y'all requested! That music hits different! We too blind to be scared! Crying! 2 a.m. for me? What you mean? Crying! Right there isn't shit. Can catch my black ass in the dark! Use Elliot's bay on weed. Time. I was walking down the street with my boy at night, and then a dog hits that corner quick as fuck. I turned to my friend, he already down the street. <laughs> Throw her at them kids. No. Ellie <laughs> already ran away, bro.
This lady dead. Oh shit! Fun alarm! That gave me a slight, the slightest bit of a jump scare. Ha! And I'm the one drawing. Ha! Music got to chill. <laughs> That's not me. Granny got clapped, and I feel so sad for her. Absolute nightmares. Mm hmm. I'm in my ear. Get out of here. <laughs> I don't want to hear this girl in my ear. Oh, okay. Okay. There's a little girl in my ear. I ain't got no little girl. <laughs> oh, it's lit to me, right? Man, go sleep, girl. Don't get my ear. Me, me, me. Just some spooky chills tonight. Mm -hmm. Dylan's chilling. Song, the songs are heat. Take your time, Hound. I'm not gonna fold so I keep music. So I say keep the music. I do. Now I'll leave it. Sets the mood. Crying. Well, it's three against two. I'm sorry. <laughs> He's just chilling, bro. I'm crying. I 
think I would have to make this taller, but I don't feel like doing that. What I could do is this. Autosave? Is this autosave? Knock the fuck out, damn. I'm supposed to sleep on the pavement. Who playing piano right now? I don't know. <laughs> okay. Hold on, let me save this. You sweet chin music that nigga. What? Took off on his face. <laughs> oh shit. Let's see if I And whatever. I don't know. I don't know what I'm trying to do with the fingers. Sweet dreams are made of this. Who am I to disagree? Travel the world on the seven. Everybody's looking for something Sweet dreams are made of this Who am I to disagree? Travel the world and the seven seas Everybody's looking for something 
something some of them want to use you some of them want to get used by you some of them want to abuse you some of them want to be abused hold your head up keep your head up hold your head up Keep your head up, hold your head up, keep your head up, hold your head up, keep your head up. Sweet dreams are made of things. Who am I to disagree? <laughs> That's why I put in the spooky playlist. Very haunting. You guys sound so stressed in chat. At least you know that when I make a playlist, it's gonna be spooky. Depending on the vibe, I I can catch that vibe. See this music I'm about to have some crazy streams. Oh shit, you right. This shit ain't something to listen at to at night. Come on, 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 come on,
Ah, my wrist. Quincy, play that? What's that? Hold on. Oh no. The only thing a nigga like me fears is an account balance of zero dollars on week, Donzilla. Couldn't get up in the morning. Whenever you see a horse go by, you know it'll be the next to die. They wrap what? you up in bloody sheets and throw you <laughs> down ten thousand feet. They put you in a big bar box. What? No, sir. Add the mute it. Oh, shit. <laughs> German nursery rhymes. What? Long this dark now when I was looking outside through the window. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all scary as fuck, ma'am. Quincy trying to summon. <laughs> right now during Hurricane Matthew SMH the fuck's wrong with me but please let the rain stop my neighborhood is flooding oh no I hope they lived what the fuck they never updated oh my god <laughs> where the fuck did you find this song um spec linked it to me right after this stream, I'm gonna be looking at a little girl. <laughs> Why is it always a little girl? I don't know. I have no idea. Cause the truth that settled in, <laughs> hiding under goose down, for your nightmare to begin. There's no crying wolves now. Cause the truth that settled in. Hiding under goose down for your nightmare to begin. Welcome to the playroom where all your darkest fears are gonna go for you. Go for you. Welcome to the playroom. You'll know I wasn't joking when you see them too. See them too. Hellraising, hellraising, I'm ready for the worst. Put salt around my house. I'm 
I'm gonna put them over here because if I remember correctly, they kind of were seen behind these kids. So here goes them in the background, Alex and Ellie. We're just gonna. Low fuck, like what? And we got little pigtails. And um. Alex got her hair. Shit. Oh, the what else to do right there? They're just hiding over there, like, nigga, what is going on over there? <laughs> so, yeah, there goes the forest. And, yeah, just fuck all that, you know? I'm gonna let them. I want the campfire that has been decimated and some rocks. And right here is hot. Yep. Maybe like they're right next to the tennis thing. Which would be having a rope like this. Yeah, there goes that scene. This is gonna be on the screen for a while while I'm reading.
Alright, so that's the end of this scene. <clears throat> Poor granny. But she did. She is dead. So we're gonna turn off the music and continue reading. So now we're on chapter Crying spec. <laughs> Take board to experience some anointing oil in Jesus. Wait, what? What did board say? Get out like a G. What? Need an exorcism. Put some in my house. <laughs> String it out. <laughs> what in the world, boy? Trying to go out like a G, oh lord. Trying to sedately see the new puppies and fears, bored, chill, where she sings. But a, it, oh hell no! Oh no, board got no words. <laughs> anyone not here? <laughs> oh shit! Just me. Oh, we count. Like I saw you were low on eggs too, man. I'm weak. Walk in the woods at night. Can't see shit though. Damn. Sounds like you guys want me to turn on song requests, but not when I'm reading. Maybe when we're drawing next time. <coughs> Partners in crime. Oh, <laughs> it's okay. It's fucking wild. Immerse y'all. Copyright strike. I really don't like copyright strike. You're right. I do have to put, put this on YouTube. So I will get probably copyright strike for this. Mm. Unless I like edit it, but who knows. He said, which doctors? You don't need to board. I promise. I'm weak. Don't go damn Harry Potter shit going on. I don't live in that house anymore, so it's nice. Oh, thank God. Because I was about to say, like, what the fuck? Like, why would they leave shit in that house? Like, damn. That's so... Bro. Anyway. <laughs> Let me turn on my window. Because I need some more light. Damn, I just snapped all my bones and now I feel a little dizzy. By the way, after the stream, we're gonna watch Ling play Little Miss Fortune if she hasn't started yet. So can't wait for that. Anyway, back to this. We're only five chapters in. Four technically. We haven't even started chapter 15 yet. Wow. Grandpa, why? Did she say turn on my window? Nigga, turn on the window? What? All right, anyway, I'm going to read. Alex? Hmm? Are we going to be okay? Sure. Alex hugged the girl closer. Not out of affection, but expediency. The less space between the more they'd be. Beneath them, their nest of leaves and debris crackled with a sound like dry cell phone, cellophane. 
The debris shelter was warm, almost toasty for their body heat, compared as it was in thick tree foot mold of leaf litter. We'll be fine. A couple more days and we'll be at the rangers. They'll know what to do. They'd run as the sky fired with a startling blood red sunset. One that made Alex think of that really famous painting where the guy was standing on a bridge and screaming. They kept on running as that weird light faded. Then they run some more. Stumbling on by a flashlight until the only sense Alex picked up were the forest and themselves. By then, with the moon not yet risen, the woods were black and the going too treacherous for them to continue. Ellie hadn't wanted to eat, really. Alex didn't much blame her. She was pretty queasy too, almost chemo queasy, and wrung out from the accumulated horrors of this terrible day. Clutching her useless iPod, Ellie watched as Alex threw together a debris shelter using pine bows and deadfall. Somewhere along the way, the girl had vomited and Alex used her shirt to get rid of the worst of the muck on Ellie's face in parka. She managed to coax the kid into chewing the, mo the moist inner bark of a thin twig of white pine. Tastes like a shimmer lemon drop, Ellie, honest. Pines were famine food too. The Ojibwa used to pound the dried pl pulp into flour, and Alex briefly considered then abandoned the idea. They were so not sticking around any longer than they had to but they would be in a world of hurt if Alex couldn't find water and soon. The stream was back the way they'd come, but there was no way she was retracing her steps. Not with those kids out there. They just had to hope another stream inter intersected the trail, because at this rate, the river was still three days out. Not good. Now, Ellie asked, what about food? We've got jello in the power bars. But I ate one. It's okay, Ellie. You were hungry, it's fine. I stole it. She decided on a different tack. When we get to the river, we'll fill up our water bottles and catch a couple of fish. Would you say the fishing will slow us down? Well, not necessarily. If we're stronger, we'll move faster. You've got the rod and the lures, right? <laughs> uh-huh. Ellie's voice was so drained of color, it sounded transparent as glass. So we're set. What if they're not biting? They're bi they'll bite. And she thought of something. Your grandpa took you out of school to go hiking, right? So when were you supposed to go back? To school? Um, Tuesday. Today was Saturday, which means you have to get back on Monday at latest. So is there anyone? So is there anyone at your house? Just Mrs. Pierce. She lives next door and takes in the mail and does stuff with the lights. So there you go. If you guys don't show up by Monday, Mrs. Pierce will get worried. She'll probably phone the rangers at the park entrance. Or maybe the station. I wouldn't be surprised if the rangers know all about you by the time we get there. Won't anyone worry about you? Sure, but not for a while. It occurred to them that without her watch, she might easily lose track of the days. One more thing to worry about. Maybe not just stick. What if Mrs. Pierce doesn't worry? What if it takes her a couple of days? Well, you worrying about her and not worrying won't help. Don't sweat it. Come on, try to get some sleep. I can't, I rustle as Ellie squirmed. These leaves are itchy. Try. But what if, what if that girl, what if they, they won't, it'll be okay. But how do you know? Because we ran a long time and they didn't come after us and now it's dark. If they were going to chase us, they'd have done that already. Pause. Why were they doing that? Why were they? I don't know. Maybe the brains out made the kids go crazy like the deer and the birds. But the birds were back to normal and so was Ellie. And eating people was way, way out there. Just thinking about it stroked goose flesh from her skin and set her teeth. Had those kids killed that woman? They must have. She looked pretty old, like 50 or 60. So between the two of them, taking her down might have been easy. Alice can almost see the movie in her mind, like one of those Animal Planet videos. The kids attacking, pouncing, swarming over the woman, 
tearing open her belly, ripping out her throat with their teeth. God, just like animals. She shuddered at the thought. And what was that stink? It smelled like... She didn't know. Roadkill. Yeah, but it was a really old smell. Uh, it was really old smell, too. I don't know, my brain just paused right there. No, old wasn't the right word, either. The kids smelled wild. They were wild. They were like zombie. They were like zombies, only alive instead of coming back to life. Or maybe they had died and then... No, no, that couldn't be right, could it? God, she didn't know. All she knew was their electronics were fried and so had their brains. <clears throat> the brain zap hit them all. The animals and these kids and her and Ellie. Until now, she thought that she was the only one who changed. A stupid assumption, but she just hadn't had anything to go on. Hell, she would never stopped to consider that the zap might have covered over a big area, not just the mountain, but the valley too. The mountain was what, what, five miles back? So the zap was a circle, say about a radius of five miles square, that in times pi, and, oh my god. Her breath caught. Eighty square miles? The Waccamaw was huge, almost 400 square miles. If she was right, that zap hit a fifth of the wilderness. A lot of land. And how many people? This far north, and the fall colors were past peak by a good week which means the tons of tourists already have come and gone. And what was with those kids? They changed in a way that was different from her. Or maybe not. She remembered how Pony Girl, Ponytail Blonde had tested the air. What if their sense of smell sharpened too? What if that's the first step? Her restless mind stayed back to those gunshots. For the first time, she considered that maybe the question wasn't what those guys had been shooting at, but who. Let me read up chat because I see y'all texting up in here. Wait. What the fuck? <laughs> uh, shut up. Streamlabs crying. Bro, damn, we reading in here. What y'all yelling? I'm crying. Hello, Sherry. No, 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 my bad. It's cool. Just immersed. Reading class. I'm here for it. Giggling. Grab your textbooks to page 51. I'm weak. That was paper at May. Damn, bro. Feel like I haven't been here forever. Hey, what's up, Trey? You still reading Ashes? Yep. Yo, I'm a totally teacher. We're only on chapter like 16 or something. I only do it every Saturday. What's up, Oni? Murder orphans. What? Motherfuckers wild in the classroom right now, Quincy. Can we get some disciplinary action? I'm weak. <laughs> Y'all need to stop. The feds are tripping, bro. My alarm went off. My mom called them and said it was her fault and they went through my house. What? How to throw all y'all in the dungeon with Miss Trunchbull? I'm weak. <laughs> what is <laughs> yellow wild now? Anyway, let me see. Um, was that going to happen to her? God, she put she'd put a bullet in her head first. What if she didn't notice until it was too late? Worse. What if she didn't want to stop the change? What if she didn't care? Alex? Ellie's voice floated out of the dark. Is what happened to those kids going to happen to us? Hearing her thoughts come out of Ellie's mouth thoroughly creeped her out. No, Alex said automatically. It's been too long. It would have happened already. Liar. The voice was small, only an inner whisper misting through her mind. You don't know anything for sure. You've changed, and you're still changing. You're smelling things, and you're smelling meanings. That zap was only this morning, and look how far you've come since then. Look how fast those kids changed. Maybe what happened to them hasn't cut off to you yet. Go away, you. She couldn't worry about this now. She didn't want to worry about it ever. All she wanted was to close her eyes and not dream at all. To wake up in her bed, 
and see that this was all a really bad nightmare or something. Come on, she said. Go to sleep. We have a long day ahead of us tomorrow. I'm scared to go to sleep, Ellie said. What if I don't wake up like me? We'll be okay. How do you know? Maybe we're going to die. No, we're not. Not today. It was another automatic response. A little bit of the gallows humor, or reality, she adopted over the past two years. And not tomorrow either. A pause. Sorry about Mina. She wouldn't leave. I couldn't get her to come. You did the best you could, Alex said, though she doubted this was the case. The kid hated that dog. Do you think she'll be okay? I don't know, Ellie. She seems like a pretty smart dog. Maybe she'll go wild. Maybe. I don't know how fast dogs go wild. If they're starving, maybe very fast. But that was her voice now, not this other whisper. Grandpa said there's a lot of wild dogs in Wakama already. He says that people leave them here because they think they're doing the dogs some big favor by sending them free. Only a lot starve and the ones who don't go and the ones who don't go wild. I don't think worrying about Mina will help. Oh, silence. I wish I could do it all over again. Do what? Everything. I wish I had been nicer to Grandpa, Ellie whispered miserably. I wish I had been nicer to Mina. Maybe I'd been better. Maybe if I'd been better, my mommy wouldn't have gone away. She wasn't exactly sure what to say. Your grandpa said your mom went away when you were really little. Couldn't have been anything you did. You were just a baby. Maybe. Daddy had some pictures, but he didn't like looking at them because they made him sad. Ellie was quiet at a moment. Ellie was quiet a moment. I don't even remember what daddy looks like anymore. He's all blurry. He made me mad too. How come? Because he went away when I told him not to. He said he had to do it because it was his job. Alex knew what this was like. Sometimes when you're sad, it's easier to be angry. Do you get mad at your parents? Asked Ellie. Alex throat bald. All the time, she said. Ellie fell asleep not long after, but tired as she was, Alex couldn't relax. Her mind churned and she was restless, jumpy, her legs a little herky-jerky. The feeling reminded her of the time Barrett tried a med that was supposed to make her not puke during chemo. Reglan, was it? She couldn't remember. She'd been through enough drugs over the past couple of years to keep a small army of pharmacists in business. The problem with meds was that even the ones that were supposed to take care of the side effects had side effects. Like the way Reglan made her all twitchy with the horrible total body sensation of ants swarming over her skin. So she'd been a total spaz and nauseous which sucked. The distant cry of a coyote came then, a sound like the squeal of a rusty hinge. Maybe she should keep watch. There were animals after all, and those two brain-zapped cannibal kids. Who knew what, who they might have to, they might have in mind for dessert. Yeah, maybe a quick turn around their camp, better than lying here. Ready to jump out of her skin, reaching for a Glock, which she'd taken off along with her fanny pack before bedding down. She winced at the sharp, harsh crackle of leaves, but Ellie, but Ellie didn't stir. She cradled the gun. Its solidity was reassuring. So was its scent. Gun oil. The faint metallic char of burnt powder. The holster smelled like comfortable shoes mingling with just the tiniest whisper of sweat. A scent that was not hers. She knew that. Oh, Dad, tell me what to do. Her throat tightened. Would he understand if she had to use the gun? Would her mother? Because if Alex changed even more, if she got like those kids, she'd have to take control. Do something before it's too late. Anyway, it wasn't like she never thought of suicide. Call her crazy, but suicide was a way of taking charge and fighting the monster. An alien invader she never thought of, her, of, of as remotely belonging to her in any way. Killing herself before it could finish its work was sticking her thumb inside a way of depriving the monster of its final victory. Now, though, she and the monster might be inseparable, one and the same, and that changed everything. I'll be the monster.
If I use the gun, I won't be taking it out. I'll be killing me. Then she had another, even more horrible thought. What if she was all right, but Ellie changed? Could she shoot a little kid? God, this was all so messed up. She burrowed out of the shelter fast, winking against the burn of tears. After the warmth of the shelter, the slap of the chilly forest air set her teeth, and she stood a few moments, shivering in the dark. Her throat working, the raps of her breath seemed very loud, and she clapped a hand to her trembling lips to catch a sob. Stop this. Stop this. She had to get a hold of herself. She had to deal. She was the only one who could. Who could. Ellie was just a little kid, so it was up to Alex to get them out of this. She just didn't have time to feel sorry for herself. She gasped. Time. She just remembered, guys. She just remembered, guys. So any more final theories about what was the time thing that she just remembered? Any more final theories before I read it? She just remembered. Remembered. She just remembered. Do, 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 do. Remember. I'm about to go see about some herky jerky. Oh, Lord, never mind. I gotta go to the store for that later. Oh, shit, Speck. Oh, no. I knew you guys were gonna talk about the herky jerky. <laughs> Herky jerky is moving quickly and stopping quickly. Oh, Lord. Let me read up chat while you guys think about this. I'm about to tell you what the time thing was. Oh, Stradry went to bed. Nice, Stradry. I'm weak, Matilda. My nigga Subi got a two. I was waiting for someone to get the scent reference because it clearly wasn't going to be my ass. Wait, what? Shit went over my head. Damn, Speck. Hey, I'm going to go. Good night, y'all. Hope y'all don't get nightmares because I sure am. From that depressed ass music. Oh, no, Stranger. Oh, fuck. Herky jerky, huh? Mm -hmm. I know y'all caught that. Mm -hmm. I'm feeling herky jerky right now. If I'm on it. Mm -hmm. Shit, it might just be herky jerky season now that you mentioned it. Oh, my God. Get out. Oh, get out. A staple phrase of my dialect. Oh no. Anybody wants some herky shaky? <laughs> oh, we. Oh my god. I'm so dumb, y'all. Herky jerky is a dim town. This is something else. Explain it, but I don't even know anymore. The watch is a bomb. <laughs> Time is reversed. That sounds blessed. Herky jerky for the whole squad. Might just get some for the whole stream. I'm weak. Okay, I'm about to let y'all know now what she just realized. Time. The airplane. The plane. That's what had been bothering her all day. That feeling like a toothache. That thing about time. The airplane hadn't come back. And it always came back at the same time, every day. She hadn't heard the airplane on its return trip. She ticked through the possibilities. Maybe the plane had crapped out and could no longer fly. Or maybe she just missed it. There had been a lot going on. Maybe the plane's engines couldn't carry into the valley or it had altered its flight path. Maybe it didn't fly back to its home field on Saturday nights. Maybe it came back on Sundays. Or what if the plane had been airborne when the zap happened? Would the plane crash? She thought back over the time frame of that morning. The plane passed overhead at 7.50. The zap happened at 9.20. 90 minutes later, 90 minutes later, give or take, where would the plane be then? That depended on speed, right? Might have landed before the zap, or maybe not. If the plane crashed, would she hear it? She thought not. But assuming she could hear it, and the plane hadn't crashed, A, or B, flew a regular Saturday afternoon route, then either she'd missed it all through the excitement, or the plane could not fly. And if that was true, then this thing was way bigger than 80 square miles. There were two ways to figure this out. She could wait for morning, get herself oriented, and listen for the plane. 
If it flew over or near the valley, she would hear it. If she didn't hear it, that didn't necessarily mean anything bad, but she still had a lot of questions. Or, one thing about being really far away from other people in cities, no light pollution. Even with the moon, she should be able to spot planes even high overhead. First, she had to find a break in the trees. Now that her eyes had adjusted, she could make out her immediate surroundings. A murky patchwork of moth-eaten sponges of gray at her feet. The black reforms the trees rearing up from the forest floor. Glimmers of moonlight that shone through the, gra- through the gaps in the forest canopy as dull silver coins. The moonlight was a little off, not as bright as she expected. Too gray. Weird. In the four days she'd been on the trails, the moon had been waxing. The last time she noticed, the moon was, what, three quarters full? Well, maybe the moon was setting. A splash of silver gray light glimmered off to her right, which meant a large break in the trees, and she moved that way slowly. One hand in front of her eyes to want ward off low-lying branches, pausing every few paces to listen, wincing at the rustle and stir of the forest with every step. Twice, feeling a little foolish, she even sniffed, registering cold leaf, rot and soggy wood, but no roadkill reek, nothing that translated as wild or dangerous. So that was good. The gap in the trees was as big round as a house, and she stood in the center, but her head back and her left hand raised to block out the indirect light of the moon leaking from behind a veil of pine. The trees were a little off, not hard and glassy, the way the stars were full and the, the way the stars were in fall and winter, but hazier like summer stars. Well, that was strange. Stars always seemed brighter this time of the year, not only because the view was different, but because cold air held less moisture, and the earth was turning from the Milky Way, the fewer visible stars in the sky. The ones that were left were easier to see and appeared brighter, but this sky looked fuzzy. The stars not glassy, but gauzy silver blurs. Now, why should that be? The rusty cry of a coyote sounded again, though she barely heard. Instead frowning, frowning, she turned a cir- slow circle, her eyes gliding over the night nice sky and those strange stars, and then the moon. No. Her heart jerked in a sudden, painful lurch, and her mouth fell open. She was so stunned, she forgot to breathe. No, can't be. But it was. The moon was blue. <laughs> da, da, part two. Next arc in the book, Tom. Boom, wee, I'm crying. <laughs> crying, let me see. This whole story taking place during the Infinity Wars. This went from Ashes to Steins Gate. I'm weak. I've been avoiding. I feel like I've been having a time, bad time watching, to be honest. But it sounds up my alley, you know. What's going on, bro? Is this another planet? Rotten soggy wood. They on um, Mars. JK takes a while to pick up, but once it does, it's worth the wait. I think. Shit, nigga. I don't know. I I'll try it, but I don't know if I'd make it. We. This is a different timeline. What? Blue moons is the alternate dimension. Oh, we. They're still in the same world, fam, for the most part. Or I think it is. I never finished reading all three books. Like, I got to the third book, but I never finished reading the end. So I don't know what the fuck's going on. I still need to buy the other two books. But yeah, this is the state of their world right now. Whatever happened, fuck everything up. What happened? My phone died? Well, we just got, got the conclusion of why time was so important to Alex so much and why I kept stressing y'all guys, like, hey, remember the time? So I just, that was just revealed. I'm in it now for the most part. Hold me up. No, don't. Um, we about to meet the Guardians of the Galaxy! Why is the moon blue? Alex off band crying off bond. 
guessing it's all the same world, but the MP fucked up time, and now they're hopping from timeline to timeline at random. I don't know. Mm, that's your that's your conclusion, Spec. Hmm. Spec still on that, so we could we could say a timeline again. Yeah. Literally at work, being called for the dumbest shit. Damn. Rest in peace, Sherry. By the way, it's been three hours, so we're gonna check on the on the villagers again and see what they're up to. Man, I got distracted by the story you read in LMFAO. Crying. Someone was blowing bubbles in the casino floor and they called me for his dumb ass. Oh no. Security guard, by the way. Oh, okay. Let me see my kids. Oh no, it's all fun and games to my nigga Gru. Hop in his bag. <gasps> Hear me out. I got you pregnant, nigga. What? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's true. Now we have a child. Yep. Better live, better be alive. Who knows? It's been three hours, so it's been a few years. Link might be dead. All right, so you guys finished making all of the storage areas, so that's good. Let's see who's alive. So we're gonna go all the way. Oh shit. Okay, Link's still alive. Let's see how old you are now. You are 44 years old now. So it's been about four years-ish. Wait, what'd she say? Oh, damn, I, I should have read that. All right. So there goes Francis, poor Dean, Hound. Your black outfit, full, full on. Got your black outfit walking around. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there goes May, Shuri, Jay Moore. It's still a kid. But let me see. Actually, how old is Sherry? Oh shit, Sherry's a whole ass woman! Okay, Sherry, well, you're about to get dicked down because you ain't related to any of these niggas. So, uh huh, find you a man. Uh, I'm gonna put Sherry with Francis. So, let me see. Where's Francis at? You, Francis, right? Yeah, you're Francis. Alright, Sherry, come here. Um, hurry the fuck up, Francis. Actually, you're probably gonna take like the hottest minute, right? Oh, never mind, okay. It's not yet old enough. Oh, how old are you? Oh, you're 16. Never mind. You're still a child. Haha. <laughs> Let's not sell you off that early. Continue working. <laughs> I'm trying to get my cheese flap at 18. <laughs> oh, crying. So Suvi's now 16. So she a full ass woman now. She she grew. Like I love how when you were a kid and then you just have a girl spread like, Boom. I'm like bro, what? I'm weak. So, Jay Moore's 12. Tamales is 8. Cass is also 8. Same with Annalise. And Hidden is 8? Oh, Naruto's 3 years old now. Oh, how cute. So, that's everybody so far. They're living the Gucci life. Got a lot of kids running around, so we're gonna have definitely an interesting colony. FBI open up! I'm crying, Francis. Almost <laughs> got a game. <laughs> I'm calling the FBI you. <laughs> How old am I? Uh, let me see. You are 29 years old. Two years older than you're really. Trey went from Dora to a young Laura Croft. I'm crying. Yeah, you already, you're already out there, fam. That's a year, Q. Oh, a year? Oh, damn, a year then. Close enough. But let's see. Uh, oh, Naruto ain't got no skills. Sorry, Naruto. Who do you want to be when you grow up? Is he here? I don't think he's here. Um, let's see. He has good mental strength and great physical strength. 31. Damn, crying. Construction of your whole tier wood gathering. So that should be good. I 
Hello, I need somebody. Come uh -huh. here, Bordeen. Thank you, Bordeen. Alright, let's see how many science points we got. We're halfway there. Gotta get some moon dust to go a little faster. So I'm gonna go on this later and we're just gonna cram on this. Oh wait, no, you're a kid. You're also a kid, what the fuck? Bitch, if you don't hurry up and drop this shit. Lang opens the container and finds stone with strange properties. Your tribe gains the potion element Lodestone. Ooh, huh? come here, bitch. Wait, wait, wait. Before that, let me see your science skills. You got that much science, and Francis got that much science. So Francis is gonna go huh? do it. Check this out, Francis. Ah, oh, damn. Alright, uh, what about you? Because huh? we have Lodestone now. Because you had a different perspective about this, right? Fascinated by the fossil, but doesn't have the complete picture. If only there were more rocks like this, more data. But we do have it. Ah, uh, all right. Um, let's see. Uh, let me check my notes. Hi, Cynthia. What's up? My wife's calling. BRB. Take your time, hound. Let me see. Um, where are the notes again? Let me see. being yeeted oh no all right so seawater moon dust lodestone moonfall hmm rainwater stardust lodestone hmm and what okay let's find some moon dust around here none that i hear so it's not anywhere around here. Where is Naruto? Mm -hmm. Are you talking about in the game or just because if just in the game? He he he's somewhere running around. There he goes. Look how fast these little shits run. Cass often rises before dawn so she can watch the sunrise. Oh, that's cute. Oh shit, I heard that. Oh, I need a I need a person. Come here. Come here, Naruto. Thank you. Hmm. I forgot how to fix how to cure this. Um well, let me actually see Francis again, so let's see. Huh? Francis, come here. Francis feels safe and secure on the island. That's great, Francis. Uh huh? let me see. Huh? No, come here. Huh? Okay. Keep learning. I don't feel like an age I'm weak. I mean, she is a scientist now. She started young. She a young scientist. I don't know where she at though. Is that Sherry? Yeah, that's Sherry. Sherry suspects dolphins actually put together somehow when catching fish. Hmm. Yeah, see? Just an observer, you know. Just watch love unfold. Crying. Somebody's snoring, damn. Actually, you know what? Who is that? Who's sleeping in there? Oh, it's Nay. Nay is. Nay is asleep. Children sound like evil laughs off of a horror game. I'm weak.
Annalise is excited about her next birthday. Oh, that's cute. Hidden wants to explore the ocean's depths when he grows up. <clears throat> well, you're not a fisherman, so no. Oh, I heard that. I heard that. <gasps> oh, come here, kid. Please pick that up. Thank you. Yes. All right. So it was seawater, moon dust, and lodestone. All right, fam. Round one. Oh, come on. Woo! Let me see. Bruh. Fuck. Alright. Fair enough. What? What? Francis! You good? Y'all saw that, right? Y'all saw that, right? I'm not tripping? Did someone just die or something? Like, I'm confused. What just happened? Oh, uh, I'm gonna need an adult. Huh? Yeah. Can niggas drown in this game? No. I tried it. Ten stardust, hell yeah! Huh? That's a lot of stardust. Yeet. 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 I remember quickly, I don't think I could do this until they press a button, right? Effect press, someone understands, yep. Oh! Oh, I- okay, okay, I get it now. Where's Ling? Come here, Ling. Oh fuck, wait, come here. Stand still. Burst energy, physical strength has increased. Alright, cool. Now she understands it, which means... Yup! Done it. This cosmic relic has been restored to its former glory. It will now act as a beacon, increasing the amount of stardust that falls on this island. Thank you. There we go. I almost forgot. Huh? Oh wait, give me you, kid. Come here. Come here. Imagining he is the king of mushroom dwellers. Well, I see two mushrooms here, so you grab them. Good boy. Thank you. Alright, so I think everyone should be Gucci now. For the most part, um, we now have a star beacon, so we solved one of the mysteries on this island. Now we just need to figure out this one. Um, I remember it had to do with a scientist and possibly a builder, but I'm not sure. And I never figured this one out before, so I have no idea how to do this one. I have no idea. Let me, let me check. Let me see what's your perspective on this. What do you think, kid? Needs more data. Alright, cool. I also picked this up, thank you. Hmm. I don't know. I just have to figure it out as I go. Never had to solve that one before. So, that's what's going on there. Save and exit. And we'll come and check them out in another, after this last five chapters or whatever. Four chapters, I think. Yeah. So, yeah. Hopefully you guys are happy with what's going on in that island. You guys are, you know, living in harmony and everything. I won't be alive in a hundred years, so I could give a shit. Oh no, spec. Down to Jupiter. What? If you guys are talking about the apocalypse, I don't even want to read up there, so I'm good. Anyway. <laughs> The sun is set down, so I'm gonna have to switch my lighting. Um, yeah, my bones. <sighs> Gotta drag a legendary scientist. 
Ah, oh, shit. That means I should probably start spamming them with stars, huh? You know what? Let me do that real quick and see what happens. I'm just going to beef you out, Ling, since you, <laughs> you're going to die anyway. Let me see. Uh... I think anybody would love, but still, I would like to avoid natural disasters. This has music, but I never really turned it on. So I'm going to turn on the music, I think. Can I turn on from here? I think there's actually music once you're in the game, right? Oh no, there's music. So let me see. Come here, Lane. Huh? Science skill is increased. Oh, that's what I need. Thank you. Oh, also, t check out the spot, please. Oh, she gained the fishing skill. Huh? Link is just gonna be fucking OP at this point. Let me see. Rock gathering. Fishing. Huh? Oh, fuck. Huh? Huh? Come here. Rock gathering. Rock gathering. Huh? Nope. Fuck. Come here! Physical, fishing, huh? mental strain, huh? rock gathering, rock gathering, tribal legend, oh shit, but I need your science up bitch, <laughs> construction, rock gathering, and now she's a master of fishing, great, huh? alright let's see what happens if I actually, since you're OP on some stuff, <gasps> Ooh! Ling used a pickaxe to deal with the stone. To deal with the stone, a crushing blow, a piece is chipped away. Oh, bitch, what did you do? Is that from the thingy? I don't know what to do with that. Nigga, I have no idea. What happens if I take you back huh? again? The chip surface has exposed new fossils that lie within the stone. Ling is excited but can't come up with a theory to explain what is revealed. Oh. Y'all ever play Power and Revolution where you can pick to be a nation literally take over the world? That game is so detailed, it's crazy. I kind of would like the sequence to play, but I don't know if you'd be into it. Power and Revolution? Well, what does it look like? Because I'm always up for nice art too. If the art isn't enough, and stuff, then I'll be bored. Like, these villagers are very cute. The texture is really nice. It's very simple, but really, really vibrant type of colors. So it's all, it really all depends. Ugh, alright, so I need to get more stars, actually. I should not be doing this in between my draw and read, but... Oh, come here, kid. But yeah, stars are gonna be dropping from the sky like crack now. Alright, come here, Ling. Huh? Wood gathering, of course. <sighs> Alright, this, this is gonna take a while. What I'm gonna do is now I'm gonna put their, their, their stuff at slow. So that she doesn't die by the time I'm done. So, yeah, we're gonna put the, your guy's speed at slow now. Save. And... Oh, let me look at the trophies. Did my trophies reset? Okay, no, they didn't. Cool. Raise your tribe population to 50. Struck the gate yard and take your tribe to the island. You know what? I think everyone's coochie's good now. I think I'm gonna make everyone have more sex. Because I'm trying to get the, that goal. So, Ling, you're gonna smash Francis. Huh? I don't remember you ever smashing Francis, did you? I don't remember. I feel like you've already smashed Francis, never mind. Francis! 
Wait, but I think he only hit it once, right? I don't remember, damn. Yeah, he only hit it once, so yeah, you, you go smash Francis. They only hit it once. <laughs> what the fuck, Spec? I'm not reading the job. I don't like hearing pessimists and shit like that. Um, let me see. So they're gonna smash. Uh, Hound already got like two kids, right? Um, Feel the joy at the sight of her new child. Oh, Sandra, who wants to be this new baby? Huh? Who's not in the game yet? Who, who wants to be this new baby? We need more scientists. No, we need a legendary one, right? Also, we need a scientist to check what I picked. From oh, just a straight up scientist? Huh? Pick that up, please. Thank you. Huh? Chips right for this one is excited, but can't come up with a theory to explain what huh? it's revealed. Um, so he hasn't figured it out, and he's basically supposed to be the scientist. Kind of. Link that's more of the science skill now. Yeah, she's the closest to being a scientist. The most experienced scientist. Um... Who wants to be Sandra? Baby Sandra? You want it to be Cynthia? Alright. Um, she has great mental strength. Oh, and she's super strong. Damn. Oh, that's true. Her mom is Ling. Oh, Ling, you gonna have to pop some more babies before we out. <laughs> huh? What? I forgot I made you OP, so you're gonna have some crazy babies. Science, agriculture, construction, fishing. Actually, no, isn't she better at- oh yeah, yeah. Fuck it, you're just gonna do them all, man. You're just gonna do them all, lady. Let me check Link's stats real quick again. Why did I go this way? Am I done? Link got high physical strength and great mental strength. Yeah! Let me see Francis. Francis has great physical strength and good mental strength. So if I upped his mental strength by any chance? She has a better chance of being OP. Hmm. All right, Link, come here. Mental strength is increased, that's what I thought. Damn, see, now her mental strength is great. Now I need her to smash somebody again. Sucks that women has to like wait a little bit. Hello, little leg, what's good? They not gonna say shit, they just gonna let it happen. Crying, look at me popping out. <laughs> OP minion. <laughs> Let's see a visionary upgrade! Hold on, let me see. Legendary scientist. The moment, what? Oh my god, Cynthia isn't. Cynthia Speck, Chris, Michael. Yeah, you right, Chris. Um, Speck isn't in here yet? Okay. But the way he talking, mm, I'm, I'm gonna wait a little bit on that. Uh, Michael, yeah, we would need three boys in order to do Speck, Chris, Michael, even Sean. I hear stars. Alright, let me check the island real quick. Link stats are crazy, damn Link. How was the golden ages? I'm crying. Listen, Spec, listen. We don't we don't we don't do that talk here. Link, come here! No! Oh, damn it, she went to sleep. Alright. I'm sorry, fam. You're gonna have to force her out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're mad. Physical strength. Gosh darn it. Alright, get go back to bed. You feel the- How far can your physical strength go? Stop, lady! Alright, 
Yeah, so I'm definitely gonna have to slow down time. Oh shit, I need that. Come here, Shuri. Damn, alright, you gain construction skills. Let's just let's just J more out in the scene, bro. Been hypnotized by the beauty of this island. Mm -hmm. Somali thinks the girls are icky. I'm fucking weak. Cass always keeps an eye out for those elusive mushrooms. Anna sees a cloud that's in the form of a unicorn. Hidden has no thoughts. Naruto has no thoughts. Of course, the babies have no thoughts. Francis thinks this island truly has no equal. Gordina had a wonderful dream. The tribe had grown into a mighty civilization. The world ever. Now I'm taking a bad nap. Nay, have no thoughts. The way clouds disappear over the horizon, Shuri suspects the world might be round. Hmm. Oh, thanks for following, Lule. Welcome to the palace. I hope you enjoy your stay here. World's greatest fin fisherman. Aww. You're not gonna be a fisherman, honey. Oh wait, you can be! Never mind. Cass is enjoying a rare, cool ocean breeze. Thought I was already following? Yeah, I'm starting to think that maybe the thing, like, makes you guys unfollow at first, because that's what a lot of people say. Like, they thought they already followed, and then they see that they're not following, it's like, bro, what? So maybe, I don't know, maybe Twitch did that. Overheard that dolphins still sometimes rescue a drowning, will sometimes rescue a drowning swimmer. Oh, that's cool. All right, all right, so, yeah. Oh, oh, shit, come here, kid. Come here! Oh fuck, it disappeared! I was too slow. My heart, my soul. Wow. 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 Alright, I'm gonna just cook the kid then. Wow. Wow. <laughs> okay, let me stop. Yeah, 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 he's young work. You guys want to hear the tutorial, by the way? The tutorial when he talks is when they talk is so fucking annoying. So if I put the speech on and do that, and then children are too young to work like their adult tribe mates. If you like, you can set a child's priorities on the details screen. This ensures the young tribe member will start helping out as soon as they're old enough. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I play this game so much, I don't want to hear her out. She was supposed to narrate too when I restarted the game, but she didn't because I took off speech and I'm like, it's kind of dumb. But okay. Alright, so we'll come back in a little bit. I'm not gonna let it out, let it a little chill like that for too long. Because we ain't trying to have Ling die of old age. I'm pretty sure she starts dying around 60 or 70. So, <laughs> gotta, gotta stop that before that happens. Okay, settings, once again, it's that slow, cool, save and exit. Anyway. Child labor laws, oh lord. That was the thing, uh, fascinating that we all... Alright, piss off with that subject, I'm gonna continue reading. I know we're reading a post-apocalyptic post book, but damn, please, no. <laughs> So the moon is blue now. Fuck us, right? So now we're gonna go into arc two of the book. Tom. So now we're gonna finally meet Tom after 93 pages. <laughs> so almost 100, pa 100 pages in. We're gonna meet the third character who's important in the story. I, what? Just influenced it, huh? All right, so now, by Tuesday afternoon, three days after what Alex had come to think of as the zap, she had not heard or seen any planes. The moon was a deep, dark blue, and they were down to two packets of instant jello and half a power bar. Alex's head thumped from hunger and caffeine withdrawal. Her stomach had shriveled to the size of a raisin, and her thoughts were, her thoughts were starting to get muddy, sluggish, and thick. On the thin side, to begin with, she definitely lost more weight. 
She kept hitching up her hiking pants, and she jabbed another hole in Ellie's belt to keep the girl's jeans from puddling around her ankles. When they were stopping to rest, Ellie only sat and stared until Alex coaxed her into moving on again. Despite rationing themselves a half cup of water a day, there was only two swallows left in her bottle. The river was still miles in their future, and Alex knew they were in big trouble. Because they'd hit the damn fork in the road. Alex stood there a few seconds, absolutely stupid with amazement. The valley trail was marked with blue blazers so faded that the bark had bled through and turned them gray. Yeah, other than that, first dilapidated sign, they'd not run across a single marker. And now this, a fork and faded blue blazes on both trails, each of which was thick with weeds. Neither trail looked like as if anyone had taken it in quite a while. Which way do we go? Ellie finally asked. Something her father always said bubbled up from memory. When you come to a fork in the road, take it. What does that mean? It's a joke, Alex said. The memory gave her an idea, though. Ellie said, what are you doing? Just hang on. Closing her eyes, Alex inhaled again. She smelled herself, big surprise. Successive days of stewing in her own sweat had left an itchy rime on her skin. Her cheeks were puckery with dried salt, her mouth gummy, and her tongue so swollen she could barely choke back the instant jello she'd swallowed dry to save on water. There was Ellie's distinctive scent, di distinctive scent and there was also the forest itself and its welter of aromas. The sharp turpentine of pine and the dry spice. Hold on. My brain. Oh, someone's leaving? See you, Spec. Um, I'm probably going to stream again a little later just so we can play a little bit more with Mind Tribe real quick. But I'm going to cut it off from this section because I should not have been on there that long. And yeah. Uh. And the dry spice of dead leaves. Then she caught it, just as faint as whips whisper of wet. She opened her eyes. This way, she pointed to the left fork. Are you sure? As sure as I can be. The station's northeast, and the sun's behind us on the left. If we go to the right, we'll be heading south, and that's wrong. They walked as the day died, and the sunset fired the sky with that weird, blood-red light. The wet smell got stronger. Or maybe that was wishful thinking. Alex would have kept going, except that by dark, Ellie was stumbled down, was stumbled down exhausted. And the last thing they needed was for the girl to turn an ankle or break a leg. Unbuckling her fanny pack, Alex handed over the water bottle. Go ahead. I'll put the shelter together. Ellie shook her head. I'm not thirsty. Drink it, Ellie. Alex raked up the leaves. We'll hit the river tomorrow. We're really close. But there won't be any left for you. I'll be okay, Alex said. There was more of a vocal tick than something she really thought about. Arms full, arms full she pushed to her feet, then gasped at a sudden swirl of vertigo. Alex? It's nothing. Well, that was bull. She was dehydrated and running on fumes. Her face was clammy, and her entire body felt shivery and weak. She waited until she was sure she wasn't going to pass out and then made her way to the frame of bows she constructed at the base of a white pine. Dumping the leaves, she began pushing them into the shelter. I'm just tired. Come on, drink up. Ellie looked doubtful, but tipped the last of the water into her mouth. The sight and that lovely liquid sound and the smell set off an inking so strong, Alex could feel it in her bones. Turning away, she pushed into their shelter busying herself with their bed of leaves. There'll be water tomorrow, she thought furiously. You just focus on... A soft sob from outside the shelter. And now it's frowned. Ellie? I'm... The girl choked. I'm... Alarmed, Alex scuttled out of the shelter. What's wrong? I I'm sorry. I'm sorry about everything. Ellie's face nodded but she was too dehydrated for tears. This is all, all, all my fault. 
It's nobody's fault. We've been doing the best we can, but I'm not. I st stole your food. You're giving me your water. I don't know anything important. You make the fires and tell us which way to go. You know how to do everything. She surprised herself. Well then, we have to change that. Come on, I'm gonna teach you how to start a fire from scratch. Startled, Ellie looked up, gulping back tears. Really? Yeah, really. What did Aunt Hannah said? It's not your competence, I question. Being competent was Alex's best line of defense along the mon against the monster. Maybe all it gave her was an illusion of strength, but she would take that over feeling helpless any day. She gave the girl a little poke. Come on, you need to get fuel. Ellie scrambled up to comply. She was so eager. She held back a small dead pine, the whole bloody tree, as Aunt Hannah would have said. The tree was too newly dead, too green to be useful, but Alex stifled an impulse to point out to the girl what she had done wrong. Instead, she showed Ellie how to take from the tree what they could use, dead needles, the thinner branches, and then have the girl segregate and mound the fuel. The foundation is really important. If you don't build it right, you've wasted your time. Now this is the best part. Tearing open an alcohol swab, nose twitching against the sharp alcohol, alcohol stain, Alex pinched out the wet gauze square most of the way. Then had Ellie hold on to the foil as she lit one of their waterproof matches. Okay, hang on to the foil, she said, then pass the flame beneath the swab. The swab caught with a very small whoop, and a tiny liquid-like flame sprouted, bright and blue. Ellie gasped. Wow. Yeah, wow. It's cool because it lasts a lot longer than the match, but now you've got to use it to light the tinder. She watched as Ellie touched off the tinder, saw the yellow-orange bloom as the tinder caught and then almost died. Here, look, she said, and gently blew on the guttering tinder which then brightened as hot and blood red as those fiery sunsets. Come on, blow, it's not too hot, just not too hard. The fire went out twice, once when Ellie blew too hard, and again when she didn't blow hard enough. On the third try, the fire caught and held. I did it, Ellie whooped. Alex started to laugh as Ellie jumped up and did a little dance, pumping her fist in the air. I did it, I did it. Yes, you did, said Alex, giving the girl a hug. You totally rock. They sat up for the next few hours, beating the fire and basking in the warmth. Mm -hmm. Let me get that water. <laughs> Ellie didn't want to let the fire die, die, die down, but Alex finally insisted that they had to sleep. But it'll go out, Ellie said. It'll die. Not if we bank it. Here. Using a long, staunch branch, Alex showed Ellie how to position the burning wood to restrict airflow. This is where the ashes get really important, she said, and began carefully scooping out handfuls of cool ash, which she drizzled over the flames. The ashes are like a blanket. They protect embers during the night. Tomorrow morning, all we have to do is give the embers some fuel, some air and fuel, and we'll have fire. But if we stay to restart it, Grace's fa Alice fa Ellie's face creased with worry. Won't that slow us down? No, it'll be good practice. We'll be fine. By the time they crawled into their, into their shelter, Alex felt better than she had in several days. She was still very hungry, but she could stand this. They were close to the water, and soon they would be at the ranger station. They would be okay. If they absolutely had to, they could stay put for a day, maybe near the river. Maybe that would be smart. Getting to the ranger sooner wouldn't help Jack, and there was Ellie to think of. Maybe she thought drowsily. Maybe she thought drowsily. They should hang out at the river, catch some fix, fish. Alex? She crawled back towards consciousness. Hmm? Thanks. Hmm, she said again and yawned. No problem. No, I mean, not just for the fire. Thanks for not leaving me. That made her wake up. Wasn't a lot of this her fault? Not Jack, of course. But if she'd not gotten so freaked... Had a bit more patience, they might be in a lot better shape, with food and plenty of water and maps. And here Ellie was thanking her. I shouldn't have left you, she said, 
You weren't ready, and I was too freaked out to see that. You won't leave me again, will you? No, she meant that. Promise? Promise. She crooked her little finger. Pinky swear. After a moment's hesitation, Ellie threaded her, lip, her pinky around Alex's. You won't forget? Never, Alex said, and thought maybe they'd turn some corner. But tomorrow, when they, reached, when they reached the river and there was water and fish, their worst days would be behind him, behind them. Famous last words. Famous last words. Famous last words. Ooh. Let me read up that. Okay. Aloha, Mika. Thank you for following. I see you. What's good? How are you?